ప్రభు తవ మూర్తి వినోదకారి పలపన విసరే నహి జో విసారి జుగల చరణ సోల చిన్న జేహ నజ రసమీ పెరహో అమారి ఏహ బులగన్ శ్యామ్ మహారాజ్ నీజే స్వామినారాయణ భగవాన్ నీజే సుప్రీమ్ ఓ మాయి బిలవెడ్ గన్ శ్యామ్ మహారాజ్ ద పాథ్ మేకర్ టు అవర్ లిబరేషన్ పూజ గురుజీ పూజ సంతో ఆల్ యూ డివోడీస్ జై స్వామినారాయణ జై స్వామి నో క్విక్ క్వశ్చన్ ఫర్ దోస్ కిడ్స్ వాచింగ్ There's many games that we play when we're free. Like hangman or duck duck goose or crosswords. But have you ever played the game who am I? Yeah. You have, huh? Who am I is a game where there's people involved in it. There's teams that you make in who am I? And then afterwards there's one person standing and he's the one that has to guess or the crowd has to guess the person so there's certain clues given background information about that person his age maybe or something he did let's try a couple so you know what i'm talking about he's the 16th president of the united states he chopped down the cherry tree and he helped abolish slavery who am i Abraham Lincoln. That was easy. Now, let's move a little into religion. He surrendered everything to Sri Ji Maharaj. Everything. And Sri Ji Maharaj stayed in his darbar for 29 years. Who am I? Think, this one's a little tough. Oh, I heard someone say Dada Khachar. Very good. Last one. He was born in Todla, mastered Ashtang Yoga, and changed the direction of an eclipse. Who am I? Yeah, you over there. Gopan Swami, that's correct. See, this game is simple. I gave a couple of clues, and you thought in your mind, and then afterwards, you guessed the person's name. the audience is very smart and they get 100% very good but this is just a game there's a point behind this game to recognize a person via clues given right just like this game we're given clues to help identify the person without any clues would you know who the person is no even if you looked at his face you still wouldn't know let me give you a deeper example Imagine that you're walking in a mall. Obviously as satsangis, I know you don't go to the mall at all and you stay at home and buy your clothes online and just pay. You know, malls are not locations where satsangis should be. So, I highly doubt that you go to the mall. Anyways, so suppose you're inside the mall, suppose is the main word here, and you're walking and someone taps you on your shoulder you're like who is this you look to the side and he asks you where's the bathroom obviously you've been to the mall many times so you know so you tell him go to the second level you know behind the Adidas store on your left there's a T-Mobile shop in the middle behind there on the left there's the bathroom you explain them the direction directions and you go off your friend next to you asked you did you know who that was said no it was just some guy and i just showed him to the bathroom he said that was michael jordan and you said are you kidding me no that's i'm real i'm i'm serious that was michael jordan and you regret it what do you regret i should have given him directions more specifically i should have actually went to the bathroom with him holding his hand going to the bathroom there I should have at least got his autograph. I should have done something with him. Why did you realize this? Because you realized his greatness. Obviously you knew his background before, but 
when someone told you that this is Michael Jordan, then your eyes opened up. And then you were like, wow. I sh and afterwards, you regret everything. In the same particular manner, even though we have Gansham Maharaj, Puja Guruji, right in front of us, we just can't realize them. We can't recognize who they are. Due to that, our faults, our vices, due to that, our nature still remains with us. And it keeps, you can say, bugging us or kind of interfering with our life and not making us as happy as we want to be. But only if we recognized the glory of Gansham Maharaj, the glory of Puja Guruji, then it would be very, very easy for us to live a happy spiritual life in satsang. Regarding that, you know, just going back to the game, I can name any famous person and give any clues and everything would be provided and you would guess, sometimes you'd be wrong, sometimes you'd be right. But let me tell you a story in the time of Sriji Maharaj where this actually happened. My subject for today is recognizing the great. Who are great? Maharaj and his true Ekantik Sant. Recognizing them is such a difficult task that we see him just like a human perceives him. We see him just like how if a human was walking down the street and obviously we have no relation with him. You just look at him and then you walk by in the same particular manner. We see him in that form. Due to that, our vices still remain. But if we understand that there are great beyond even our imagination, then our life would also change. So in the time of Sriji Maharaj, there was this devotee. He can't be called a devotee as of right now. He can be called just a person by the name of Karno Garvi. For myself and yourself, let's just call him Garvi because it's easy for me to pronounce and you to understand. So he was from the village of Ramoli, Lamodi. Okay, let's let's not go into names. So once in Vartal, Sri Maharaj was riding his horse, Manki. Okay? And Manki was such a beautiful horse that everyone became attracted to Manki, especially Gudvi. When Gudvi looked at Manki, at first sight, he could not take his eyes off of Manki. That's how much he had attraction for that horse. So Sri Maharaj rode around, but Gudvi was so attracted to Manki that he did not realize who was sitting on top of him riding the horse. Kind of like tunnel vision. You know, when you see something and you're so attracted to it, everything else kind of blurs out and you only see that particular item. For example, just like how Gadvi was looking at Manki, suppose that someone was driving a really, really nice car, like a Mercedes. And obviously, you're looking at all the specs and the details of the car, how it's driving, how it's moving, its shape, its color, its integrity, its overall uniqueness on the road besides the other dull cars, and you're admiring that. Obviously, you don't care about who's driving the car. You just want to see that car and maybe even one day get that car in your dreams. I'm just kidding. But it's something to think about. In the same particular manner, Gudvi was attracted to Manki, Sriji Maharaj's horse. So that event ended, and then Sriji Maharaj had to actually come to Gadvi's village. So Maharaj came with his horse, obviously, Manki, and there Maharaj was riding, and Gadvi must have passed by where Maharaj was. And he saw Manki, and again, he became attracted. But now he actually recognized who was sitting on top of Manki. And he thought to himself, who did he asked? He went to Maharaj and he asked, Who did you steal this horse from? All the bodyguards of Maharaj who were around him became furious because this stranger comes up to Maharaj who's sitting on Mangi and asks him, 
who are all these, you know, ask him, who did you steal the horse from? Obviously, they knew that this was Maharaj's horse. So they became furious. But Bhagwan said to hold off, and gave him a small gesture. Again, Garvi became angry now and grabbed the reins of the horse off of Bhagwan's hands and again asked, I asked you a question, didn't you hear me? Who did you steal this horse from? It's kind of like asking a person, where did you steal this car from? Obviously, he bought the car. He didn't steal the car. It's his own car. He bought it with his own money. He has a pink slip for it. Come on. But even after that, he still can't recognize. So Maharaj again gestured in the Gati Darbars, those bodyguards, took out their swords. And they were about to really punish Gadvi in a very, very bad manner. Maharaj said, don't you recognize me? Gadvi said, I don't know who you are. I just know that this is a beautiful horse. I know that Swami Narayan was riding that horse in Vartal. You still don't recognize me, Gadvi? And Gadvi said, no, you're just a person who stole this horse. That's all I know. Then Maharaj had to actually introduce himself and said that I am Swami Narayan and this is my horse. Obviously, Gadvi at that time felt very, very bad. Just like if that person who you thought stole the car was to take his license out and his pink slip out and tell him, look, this is my own car. I did not steal it from anyone. In the same manner, in the same situation, that's what happened. Bhagwan actually told Gadvi that this is my horse. I was riding it, but you were so attracted in Vartal by looking at Manki that you forgot to see me or you didn't recognize me. So Gadvi felt very, very regretful about that. But afterwards, then Maharaj explained to him that I'm not really, really surprised at all that you didn't recognize me. Great, great demigods and great, great creator, destroyers and sustainers of this universe don't recognize me or mere humans don't recognize me. Then how could you recognize me? So I'm not shocked. But... I will grant you your redemption because you have apologized and asked for forgiveness. Due to your humility, I give you redemption. What does this story show us? Obviously, when Garvi came and saw Manki, he didn't recognize Bhagwan at first. But after he was told, and then after Bhagwan explained his own mahima, his own glory to Garvi, then after... He recognized, oh, this is God himself. The Swami Narayan who I was looking for is himself riding this horse. So it was my mistake. In the same exact way, what happens is in satsang is that we come to mandir, you know, and uh, we see there's a siyasan and there's Gansha Maharaj seated or in the middle. And we do our dhanvat, we bow down. And then after that period, after giving Maharaj that attention for three to five minutes, suppose you're there in Mandir for two hours. After giving Maharaj that three to five minute attention span, then you go off and you do all kinds of activities without even realizing that Bhagwan is right in front of me. The reason for that is we even do things that are not appropriate or we even behave or even we do any kind of activities that are not suitable in front of Maharaj. Why? Because you haven't or we haven't recognized his greatness or who he really is, his wonder, his supremacy. If we did, then we would stand very respectful. Just think. And I'll give an easy example. Everyone knows the president. And I give this example a lot. But it's the easiest way to convey to all of you. If the president was to come here, how would you sit? How would you behave? How would you look at him? What kind of respect would you give him? In the same exact manner, if we haven't recognized Bhagwan, then obviously we're going to blow him off just like any other person. Just He's a mere person to me. If this is Bhagwan, if we can do this to Bhagwan, then obviously it's done to Santos as well. 
Santos, they move and they talk. Maharaj just sits in that siyasan. But Santos, they move and they talk. But what do we see in Santos? They eat, I eat. They sleep, I sleep. They take a shower, I take a shower. What is the difference? They might be reading a little bit of books, staying in a temple. But what is the difference? I live in a home and I also read my books. But there's a great difference. And that's what we're trying to understand here. I'm reminded of a story. Puja Swami just gave his uh, <clears throat> lecture. And in that lecture, he talked about Asakotso Lila in Loya. One time, Sri Jimaraj was in Loya doing the Sakotso. And there, it was very warm. So obviously, Maharaj, he only had a dhotiyan and upper gar there was no upper garment and Maharaj was sweating profusely. His whole dhoti was covered with turmeric powder and he looked more like a cook than like a Maharaj or like a king. So Kandas from the village of Buwa, Buwa came with, Ka with Kasidas and there saw that Maharaj was performing this kind of activity. So Kashidas was actually a devotee, so he didn't, he just started doing Danwats. But Gandas, he couldn't believe this. He thought that you're calling this Maharaj? He's, he's cooking food. And look at him, he's sweating. How could you call this Maharaj? Just think, if the president was lo uh, mowing the lawn of the White House in some shorts and a Bundy, what would you think? You wouldn't think that he's a president. No, you would think that he's something else. In the same manner, Bhagwan was doing an activity which was unlikely and rare at that time, at that moment. So Muktan Swami saw this. And Muktan Swami asked. <laughs> Muktan Swami asked that what happens to a person who goes to the Ganga River and stays thirsty? Obviously, he replied his own answer, a fool. In the same way, then Muktan Swami had to, you know, persuade him. And then Maharaj performed samadhi to Gandas. And through that samadhi, he was given divine darshan of Maharaj. And afterwards, he realized that this is Maharaj. But when, was this, when did that happen? After realizing, after recognizing that this is Bhagwan himself, then it happened. Now I talked about two stories of realizing Sriji Maharaj, but before we even realize Sriji Maharaj, we have to realize his ekantik saint, his true God-realized, self-realized saint. Kind of like if you want to become a medical, or if you want to become a doctor, you can't only do four years of biology and then become a doctor. You also have to do another four years of medical school and then after surpassing medical school and your residency then you can become a doctor in the same way to meet Bhagwan, to understand Bhagwan, you have to first understand his great ekantik satpurush his great ekantik saint now this is no easy task as we talked about because all the activities that saint does we compare to him but let me tell you what that saint is like suppose you're really sick okay and you're so sick that you have a flu and you need some kind of medical attention so before you even take an appointment with the doctor you go to the walgreens your local walgreens or your local rite aid whatever is near and you know you go to the counter where the section of NyQuil is, and you grab the NyQuil, the medicine, which is, you know, over the counter, no problem, and you take it and you start following its directions three times a day for seven days. No effect. So obviously then you tell your parents that now I need some doctor's advice and some prescription medicine because this NyQuil is just isn't working. So then... They get an appointment for you, and then you go to the doctors. 
a doctor looks at you and he obviously says you have a flu so you need some antibiotics so he writes you some antibiotics and then after a seven day course you're all back to normal but my question was when you went to the store at first and picked out that medicine yourself did it cure your disease no you had to go to the doctor you had to get stronger dosage you had to get a specific medicine the specific amount in a 7 day span in order for your flu to disappear from your body in the same exact manner when we come to mandir when we have darshan of bhagwan or even if we don't come to mandir but suppose that we're religious and we come if we don't have the association with the saint and we try to destroy our vices our natures ourselves it's kind of like picking out medicine from that store but if we actually engage with that true saint engage and do as he says then it's kind of like getting medicine from a doctor he's going to give you the right dosage the perfect amount and you're going to feel better in a short span of time instead of you trying to make yourself better why don't you put yourself why don't you put your body why don't you put your mind why don't you put your soul in the hands of the true ekantik saint who will make you feel better in a shorter span and without any kind of side effects so we talked about a couple things here Re- recognizing you know the true ekantik saint and recognizing bhagwan but when we do this that's the only way that we would progress in satsang but our first step as we talked about is recognizing the ekantik saint to do this what we must do is take his refuge just like how outside when it's raining very bad what do you do take an umbrella right when you take an umbrella even if you have to just walk 5 or 10 feet you're not going to get wet because that umbrella is your refuge in the same exact manner the ekantik satpurush when we take his refuge we are or we become beyond this maya this illusion and we can attain akshardham very easily so recognition is something that must be done in satsang and it can only be done in satsang and we must realize the glory of bhagwan and his saint and the only way to do that is to associate with saints and when we associate with them they help us recognize the real you can say form or shape of this satsang and through that our whole life will transgress in that progress in that direction and will attain akshardham easily our goal is to attain bhagwan his divine abode and become free from this blemish this world which is full of misery so i highly recommend that all of you i'm sure all of you are but if you have or if saints are not available in your region then contact them by a phone or find discourses online and associate with them in that manner and through that you'll realize the glory of bhagwan and when we realize bhagwan's glory then we'll be able to attain akshardham easily ansham mara janije puja rushi will of swami will be giving his lecture in a short period of time
ಶ್ರೀಸರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀಜ ಆಲ್ಮಾಟಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಓಲ್ ಬಿ ಲೌಡ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಗುರುಜಿ ಭಗತ್ ಜೈನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಟೂ ಡೇಸ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಯಸ್ಟರ್ಡೇ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ಫೆಸ್ಟಿವಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಮಹಾಮಂತ್ರ ಆನ್ ಏಕಾದಶಿ and last lecture of puja jit bhagat we have also listen the greatness and glory of the swami narayan maha mantra now on that ekad on the day of ekadashi bhagwan swami narayan himself in the village for any give the mantra the greatest of all and that is that is swami narayan maha mantra for the benefits or for the uh, granting the ultimate liberation to all the jews now suppose you are in the air you are in the aeroplane and when you when you are on the air and on the height or altitude of 36000 feet in the air now your captain of the plane announced that i am so and so and uh due to sudden um mistake in the engine of this plane we have to land emergency on the water in the sea at the same time if you are a devotee of god or if you believe in any bhagwan or in any goddess or in any religion first when you remember your god same time you also chant his name and praying for life this is what your necessity and the first step you do in the plane when you have some adverse circumstances in the plane now if by the proficiency of the pilot you your plane is landed on the water safely then after what you do in the plane because you are in the plane and in the what plane is on the water now you are safe but how can you remedy yourself how can you come out from the plane yourself only the persons who are out of danger who are out of the plane they only can save your life in the same way we are in this world we are in this human body we have also the same dangers just as you are traveling in the plane and your plane is just near to crash the passengers in the plane they have they automatically felt some dangerous feeling or some near that experience in the same way we have to experience the near that experience while living in this body and in this life when we feel the same feeling same dangerousness then automatically we our tongue is start to chant the holy name of bhagwan 
nobody is needed to instruct or inform him to chant the holy name of bhagwan now then after in the plane or if suppose you are in the car and some fire is starting and your car is locked now your car is also damaged the door is not going to open so you definitely search for the any way any how you want to come out from the car in the same way when we understand the dangerousness after the life or if we think about what will happen after this body then we will definitely attain the same feeling at the same time and due to this feeling we also realize the glory of bhagwan and the glory of the chanting of his name not only this but just as we find uh, find out the any other way by which we can come out from the crisis or any dangerousness in the same way when a person realize the dangerousness or the fear of the after that experience then the person automatically force himself to find out the way any how he can save his himself from this danger so we are talking about the plane landing on water the emergency landing now you are safe in the plane and you also want to come out from the plane but you have no any way because if you open the door you have only water now the only persons who are outside from the plane they come near your plane through the boat and then if they can do anything and they can open any other door or any how they can save your life but not you your your own self in the same way we are in the burning world and we also want to come out from this all miseries and all all kinds of dangerousness now we also want to we also uh, we have also tried so many ways so that we can redeem but we every time fail we have no chance but we have to keep only the hope of somebody come to me from outside and fetch me from this mundane world material world and give me some safe place safe area now the quest the main point is that only those who have no danger who have who are already come out from the danger those person only can fetch the another person out from the danger so you we have to find out those persons who are not in danger who are not in the crisis or who are not in any kind of bondage they are so, uh, one who are free can make the other person free so now bhagwan swami narayan has given us a chance he has given us the company of his holy and pious saints who are definitely free from all kinds of bondage meaning they are free from all kinds of danger they have no kind of fear even in their mind because they have the asif the refuge of bhagwan himself and due to the refuge of bhagwan they have no kind of fear in their mind and that's why they can also grant the other person a safe area safe place for living peacefully and the place the area where one can live and enjoy the happiness that is the only and only the abada of bhagwan now 
The question is that how we can understand such saint that this saint has these much qualities so that I can uh, believe his talks, believe his behavior or whatever he said or instruct me. Now for that Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself say something about in the Vachanamrut. Bhagwan says in the 26th Vachanam, 26th chapter of Gada last. Swami Naran Hare. Sriji Maharaj said, What are the characteristics of a saint who is worthy of being worshipped on par with God? Well, such a saint suppresses the actions of Maya's gun, that is the Indriyas, the Antakaran, etc. But he himself does not get suppressed by their actions. This is what the main point. The true saint is always true saint is always suppress his indriyas and his mind and his antakaran meaning what ordinary person do that is not the activity of the saint because the ordinary person is always doing for pampering his indriyas means uh, he is always busy in doing what he likes on the other hand, the saint always behave in such a manner that what his mind desire, he never do that thing. If a saint's mind desire for uh, some sweet, then the saint never give his tongue a sweet. He anyhow, whether he read the scripture or whether he listen the discourse from the saint or whether he engage his mind in the remembering the divine incidents of Bhagwan. Anyhow he transfer his mind from the thinking of the sweet. In the same way Bhagwan said here the saint always suppresses Indriyas and Antakaran and that saint is only the worthy of being worshipped on at the same level as we worship the God. So now we want to redeem ourselves from this material world. We want to go to divine Abar of Bhagwan that is Aksardam. But for that we have to contact or we have to approach any person who is not of this world, who is already come here for redeem or for granting ultimate liberation to countless Jews, who is come from the divine Bharab Aksardam from here. So now Bhagwan had given the characteristic of such a person or such a sadhu so that we can approach that saint and by following his commands following his instruction, following his path on which he is already walked. We can also reach the same destination. Why? Because Bhagwan says, such a saint should not be thought of as a human being, nor should he be thought of as a deva, because such Behavior is not possible for either humans or theirs. Indeed, even though that son appears to be human, he is still worthy of being worshipped and par with God. Therefore, whoever desires to attain liberation should serve such a son. Also, females should serve females possessing such virtuous qualities. So now, Bhagwan has given us the characteristic of a saint who is worthy of being worshipped on the same level as we worship to God. But how can we taste the saint who has such virtues? Because in another Vachnamrit, Bhagwan himself said, once understanding is always tasted on the time of some adverse circumstances. 
because in ordinary situation we all remain good and happy we all remain and look like a good saint and devotees but when we encounter any kind of adverse circumstances or some odd situation in our life in our satsang then at that time our understanding is automatically tested so let we see from the past from previous saints like muktanand swami once upon a time in a village some bhavas or some sanyasis gather and they decided the muktanand swami is the head of this swami and in fact this swami and fellowship and so if we kill him then their fellowship will not remain long by thinking this all the gather and they decided to kill muktan and swami now they they want to meet muktan and swami and for that purpose they for send their person for meeting with muktan and swami and he gave some news that uh, our all the our fellowship persons or our gurus want to meet you for some discussion and muktanand swami knew because he is also omniscient and due to his power of omniscient muktanand swami knew about their bad intention not meeting for some discussion but for meet, meeting for his date then muktanand swami said okay we also want to meet your gurus and we also want to welcome him now when on one side the bavas and sanyasis vairagi they came to meet muktanand swami on the other hand muktanand swami also gather his sadhus and he also went to welcome that sanyasin and vairagis who came to kill muktanand swami and on the other hand the vairagis and the group of the bavas they are speaking very bad words for sri ji maharaj meaning bhagwan swami narayan and muktanand swami and all other saints and devotees and our fellowship they also speaking some uh, bad words bad words and they are speaking ill of our satsang but still when muktanand swami listen all these things all the other sadhus behind muktanand swami they all become angry while they have listen such bad words it's a ill words for satsang now muktanand swami muktanand swami remain very calm he is remain very peaceful in his mind because he is know in his mind that without the peace of my maharaj there will not, there nothing will be happen and so he had a garland in his hand and a fruit of coconut and he offered the garland in the leader of that vairagi baba for his warm welcome then he even by worshiping in this way welcoming in this way those bhavas and vairagis they ask for muktanand swami who is muktanand then the other uh, muktanand swami said i am muktanand i am a saint of bhagwan swami nar i welcome you all of you. i welcome all of you in my ashram please come when those vairagis listen such words and such eternal happiness in the mind and heart of muktanand swami they all they are not they but their heart is automatically changed their bad intention is destroyed at the same time this is what the qualities of muktanand swami's virtuous life even though the other person even though the enemies who are very angry even though the enemies who are speaking very ill and 
what we can say we cannot listen those words and not speaking those words they are speaking such a words and even they have some weapons to kill muktanand swami still muktanand swami remain happy and give him warm welcome with courteous words and even garland him this is what the greatness of muktanand swami and muktanand swami saintliness is touching the hearts of that bhavas the evil company and even they transferred this is what the greatest virtues from the virtues life of muktanand swami now the same virtues we can also realize in the our whole guru parampara because we are belongs to muktanand swami so we can realize the same virtues in the life of our pujya dada guru ji one upon a time when pujya dada guru ji was the mahant in the mumbai temple and at the time he had decided to celebrate the biggest festival in mumbai and at that time when all the arrangements and all the preparation is near to done and just festival is being start from next day in such a situation one big group one religious group in the same way just as the in the case of muktanand swami some evil nature bhavas and vairagi gather and come to kill muktanand swami in the same way one religious group they have some problem with swami and sect because they cannot see the growth and development of the swami and sect that's why they come to destroy all the preparation for this grand celebration in mumbai they are in his group and they are also loudly speaking ill of our sect or bhagwan our saints then somebody inform our pujya dada guru ji this is the situation now dada guru ji did not speak any word and he directly read on the spot now on the place where the another religious uh, persons they gather for destroying all the preparations of the celebration at this before them swami our pujya dada guru ji they just just approach that persons and uh, dada guru ji call him very happily why are coming here but those persons they are were angry and they say we want to destroy all these things stop this movement and stop this uh, what you are going to celebrate at, and uh, please stop this not do on this place if you want to celebrate you celebrate in your mandir but not here then dada guru ji did not say any word but he just gave smile and he said this is not a work of mine or yours this is the work of bhagwan swami nar himself if you can destroy this work then you may try by this bold nature and this by seeing pujya dada guru ji's eternal happiness and this boldness they all even though they are angry in the anger they also speak some ill of satsang and swami ji and bhagwan swami narayan still their heart is changed they remain silent they could not speak for word and they fell into let us feed up with dada guru ji and they ask for forgiveness this is what the same virtues what we have discussed from the life of muktanand swami 
now the same virtues also we can see and realize in the life of puja guruji last year guruji had to go for some task in madhya pradesh for the mandir of for one of the mandir under the vartal temple and the same uh, some situation is that the some notorious persons of the peop- of the village they have covered the all the land of the mandir and they deny to offer the same land for the temple they said this is ours not these mandirs in actually the land is of mandir but due to their notorious due to these notorious persons they have weapons and they give every time they always talk to kill the persons they are not the persons who understand in talking or discussing but they are the person who always finish the task by killing the persons this is their natures and that's why no one till today can even dare to speak or discuss anything about this land even though the land is of mandir but guruji decided to recover all the lands of mandir and build a new mandir in the village for that when guruji went to that place and when he at night he stay in the village those notorious company came to meet guruji with the weapons guruji in the room and the door is closed now the evil company from outside loudly speak some bad words and also uh they are ang- in in anger they also want to kill puja guruji now what happened guruji opened the door and come out from the room and he ask what do you want this uh, those persons they said we want to we want to save you if you want to save your life please leave this village from tomorrow guruji said i am uh, i am coming here for recover my mandir's land because this is a uh, property of bhagwan swami narayan and that's why this is not the property of yours and you have to give back the possessions of this land then they uh, those persons they said guruji if you could not understand in our words we have only the other way and that is our weapon we will kill you if you will not leave this village till tomorrow guruji said whether you do any work whether you you are going to kill me just why are you waiting for tomorrow just kill me right now but i am not a person who who is going to leave this village tomorrow i am coming here and i am definitely go back after taking a possession of of the land of bhagwan swami narayan's mandir this is what the resolve of guruji now they could not speak a word because in their life they could not find even a single person who can speak before him and when they realize some eternal strength in the life and the words of puja guruji they fell into the feet of puja guruji and next day in the morning without weapons they came to meet guruji and they also ask for forgiveness and also 
ask for wearing a kanti and guruji gave him a kanti and uh, panchvartman and niyams and from that day even those who are not talking with the persons in simple manner but who always use the weapons those convert in a simple person and even in a life of devotees this is what the power of saintliness this is what the power of suppressing one's indriyas and antakaran and this is the power of the saints who can change the mind and heart of the even the evil persons this is what our guru parampara we can realize the same virtues what we realize in the life of muktanand swami same virtues we can realize in the life of our life of our, our puja guru ji and as well as our puja dada guru ji and also we can realize the same virtues if we have the sight and if we have the sense to realize the same virtues in the life of our all the saints and some devotees also so now we have attained the same saints or uh, the saint who is the worthy of being worshiped on par with god so now it is our duty to worship the worship the saints as we worship god this is the only glimpse of this vachanavrut and this is the james of vachanavrut 26 of class chapter by saying this jay swami narayan shri ganeshyam maharaj ni jay shri patim shri dharam sarva deveshwaram bhakti dar matmajam vasudeva madavam keshavam kamadam karanam swami narayanam nilakantham bhaje shri ganeshyam maharaj ni